What is up, YouTube? M. Ford here, giving you guys a very special deck profile. Um, I'll, I'll let Darren take the floor here. Alright, I uh, top aided the Detroit Regional today. I played Metal Foes. I was very impressed with the deck. Wasn't so much impressed with myself. I didn't have a lot of time to test this week, but it ended up working out. So I played the standard three of each. There's not a lot of things to be discussed there. Played three Bunbuku, one Curran. Um, but was, why, why, why is this standard? Why, why are you playing three of everything? It's going to be a question that's going to be asked. Um, three Metal Foes because they're really only good in multiples. You need to have scales to destroy so you can make have stuff dependent on them back. So if you just run out of these cards, then you won't be able to make any plays or do basically anything. You play three of this because Curran is probably the single most powerful card on its own. This card can basically disrupt or completely stop any deck this format. And you really need that flexibility when the format is as diverse as it is. Um, I played three Ariande because I think Strike and Warning are very powerful this format, and again, since it is so diverse, you don't really want to play narrow answers. You want stuff that can respond to basically anything. And since I didn't have a whole lot of time to test, I wanted to have games where I would just open a free win, either with enough back row or a big enough board. So Ariande let me do that. I was pretty lucky with my die rolls. I won a majority of them, and then I had a couple of my opponents, even when I lost the die roll, let me go first. So I was very fortunate in that respect, but I still think that this card is good and is worth playing. And it's a low scale. I played a Luster because these two together are still very strong, and Luster gives you access to Ignister and Dynaster. I only played two Archfiend Decentric, which I know a lot of decks were playing three, but I feel like if you draw this card in multiples, it's not very good. That's a theory that I applied a lot throughout this specific build of this deck. And I also wanted to keep it at 40 cards because this deck, it, you have a whole lot of cards that don't really do much without Vanillas. other cards. So if you can open more better combinations of cards rather than the same copy of cards, you'll be able to make more plays. I did play three Gofu because this is basically the standard, and I've seen some people are trending away and not playing this card, and I want to try this deck without playing this card, because this card is really only good if you see exactly one copy of it on turn one. Anytime after that, this does effectively nothing for the deck. Also, side note, I learned this the uh, hard way this weekend. Um, these two cards are really good on turn one. That is true. <laughs> it's exactly the same with uh, Silvered. So if you have these three, you can make your level 8 Synchros without having to make a Zulkin play. Yeah. And if you don't know this, you can actually, if you're having trouble siding, you can side out one copy each of your level 2 and 4 scales. Because these really don't add any plays. You play a few rank 4s, but you're never really trying to make them. And... Uh, level 2 with zero attack isn't going to accomplish much of anything other than ever being a high scale. So usually level 3 is the one that you care about because some of the rank 3s that you can make with this are pretty good. And it does have that synergy with Gofu, which is why I think usually if you're playing Rescue Rabbit, which I wasn't today, you'd usually go for this versus the Gold Driver. I only mained two Jaugens today because I mained two Thunder King Ryos. Um, Why is this card at two? After today, I would say just play the Jaugens. This has the same type of effect where you're trying to stop, cut your opponent's options out, but Jaugen cuts down way more options than Thunder King does, and Thunder King is also not as good on the second turn of the game, whereas Jaugen can break a board as well as stop one from being made. Uh, I only played one Fusion. I only played two Painful Decision, because if you're playing your 12 Metal Foes, you don't, shouldn't need to search a specific one all that often. This is usually just your 8th copy of either your high scales or your low scales. So you have to play some cop manner of this to give you an option, versus if you draw just an 8 or just a 1. 
this gives you that option, but at the same time, you can only activate this once per turn. So just like I was saying with the Archfiend Eccentrics, you don't want to open more than one. I played two Pot of Desires, mostly just to keep it at 40 cards. You probably can and should play three of this, but I didn't. I only played two Counter, and a lot of people are telling me to play three of this, but I never want to draw this card, and this card does nothing until the second turn. It's very good at keeping you alive, but you'll always have access to it through your Pendulums, and you only really need one to like buy yourself the next turn so you can actually win the game. And if you draw two of this, or if you draw three of this, or even if you draw one of this, it's something that it's just a blank card in your hand for the first turn. So if you're trying to make a play on your first turn, this card is really, really bad. And then I played three strikes and a warning, both because I was playing Counter Fairy and because these cards just, if you go first, which I was trying to do, and you see any of these, you may not be winning that turn, you might not be establishing a big board, but you know you're going to get at least another turn. And in a deck like this, just getting to draw another card, whether it's Pot of Desires or another Scale, or a Bunbuku, which turns into a Curran, that one extra turn that these cards get you will usually be enough to win you the game. I would say I did win on turn three most of the day. Uh, extra deck was fairly standard. I only played one of this because I didn't think the Gofu was that good. I played two Orcalk. I only made the second one once. It was actually round two against a Ghost Trick player. <laughs> and uh, Double Piercing is pretty good against that deck. Played a Dynaster. I played an Omega, mostly just for Gofu in the threes. Never really made it. Ignister is really good in the mirror. Void Ogre, I would say, was the extra deck card I made the most, because if you go first with this, and you have either a Strike or a Warning set, you have Summons covered, you have Monster Effects covered, and Spell and Traps covered. So there's really no way for your opponent to play around that. I actually never summoned Crystal Wing. Obviously, you play this card, it's very good, but it just didn't come up. Void Ogre was better in a pre-situation I was playing. Uh, you played Tzulkin. Played a Totem Bird, so late game, if both your play players are top decking and you have a couple Bumbukus, you can make this. It didn't happen this regional, but it's come up a few times in testing, and there's not a whole lot of things you could play. I'd probably play a Break Sword over this if I had one, but I couldn't get one in time for the root event. I played a Mech Equip Engineer, also didn't summon this, but I was told if you make this with Jaugen or Ryo, oh, that's God. very strong. Basically, you just you have your card that's locking him out, and then this protects that card for a turn. Played a Dweller and a Castell. Played a Big Eye. This came up a few times. There was one game I had the opportunity to Big Eye to take a Minerva. I didn't do it, but it would have been really cool. And I played Hope Harbinger Dragon because I'm playing the Dinoster and Ignister. And yeah. that card is just insanely good. Alright, side deck. Side deck. I uh, played three MSTs and a Regeki. There's not a whole lot of thought put in the side deck. I just kind of threw this together this morning. Kaijus, I uh, brought this thing against Blue Eyes, that was really good. I played the third Jaugen because I wasn't completely sold on the Ryo and ended up being correct and not being completely sold on it. Uh, three Ghost Ogres for the Mirror. Two Max C, I brought this in against PK Fire. And I played two uh, Aether, the Evil Empowering Dragon. What this does is whenever it's summoned, you can target a monster on the field and banish it. So it's a very strong removal option against Burning Abyss and Blue Eyes. But I brought it in almost every game, but I never drew it all of the event. It's kind of a shame. So that was my deck. I played against um, mostly meta, other than the, the Ghost Trick player. I played two PK Fires, two Blue Eyes, uh, Yosenju Demise, two Mirrors. Ghost, and... Ghost Trick won a round one at a regional. Oh, yeah. The Ghost Trick was my round two after I was 1-0. <laughs> uh, my only loss was to PK Fire, and I completely lost to myself. It was just a misplay. So the deck functioned exactly how it was. Just a few things I want to try around with it. Because I didn't get to play with this much before the event. But I was really happy to have um, the opportunity to play the deck and do well at the event. So... Got to give a shout out to Robbie Cole, who ended up dro driving the whole way. Let's yeah, boy. Up. Yeah, he earned it. Got to give a shout out to uh, Team Zodiac, Control and Toad, of course. And got to give a shout out to my friend Josh Ingle, who 
<laughs> most basically sent me this list and told me what cards were good and told me what to do this weekend. <laughs> so why are you lying? He went through his spirals. <laughs> okay, he didn't do that well himself, but he did tell me what to do here, and it ended up working out. So uh, when the friend does better than the one friend, good times. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Well, we're out. You want to say bye? Bye. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please thumbs up this video to show your support. And please check out Vancole 40 for Cardfight Vanguard, M. Cole Games for miscellaneous trading card games, and No Limit Gaming for a brand new series of Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. Thanks for watching.